Okay, we're going to go ahead and add in the part where I need to keep the guy off the screen. So as we saw before, we could move around the screen, but if you've played around a little bit, you'll see that your guy can run straight off the screen. So let's go ahead and work on these a little bit. So I'm going to start off. I've got move down right here up the top. It doesn't really matter which one I start with, but um, let's take a look and see what we're doing. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to say if his position Y, if the player's Y position, which is up and down, is bigger than zero, which is the flat line here at the bottom. Y is zero is here. Y is 320 up top. And I see this by going to my scene. Here's the actor tab that we worked with. Here's the scene tab, and here's the default size. 320 is the height, 568 is the width. So if he's moving down, our barrier is zero. So as long as he's greater than zero, go ahead and allow him to move down. This is a double conditional that we've put in here. Now, I will show you how I drug this in here, uh, and I'll do it in a couple other times so, we go on, so we're looking at better here. So this is up, so if key press up is down, move in the direction of 90. And I guess the other video, I need to go look at it a little bit. But if key press up is down, move in the direction of 90. So if that's true, what's our top barrier? Our top barrier is 320. So if you'll see here, there's something called an attribute conditional over in the condition behaviors. So I go grab this attribute conditional and I drag it in here. Okay. So if the key press up is down and I click on the A, attributes, and since this is up and down movement, I use player position Y. Okay, and player position Y is less than, and what did we say the top of the screen was? 320. Okay. So if and only if both of these things are the case, if key press up is down and self position Y is 320, then and only then move up. So we've re re redone this. Key press down is down and greater than zero. And so I'll show you a couple shortcuts for these bottom ones too. Again, once you start remembering the things, if key press right is down and, again, we talked about do we want a key conditional? No. Backspace, we want an attribute conditional. So we just type in A and we see an attribute comes in from the A menu, attributes, player. And since this one is moving to the right, then I'm going to use the position, and since X and Y is left and right movement, I'm going to use player position X. Right means he's going to run off the screen over here, which is the far side. The far side is 568, so I'm going to go less than 568. And so both of these conditions have to be true now for him to move to the right. And by the same token, if we go down here to left, we open it up. Left is down and attribute condition. You can drag it or you can just type attribute. Put my A's and again, left movement, horizontal movement is X movement. So attributes, player, position, X. Okay, double click. And we want this one to be greater than zero. All right, so now in theory, as I run the play button here, I can move right, but only to the edge of the screen. I can move down or I can move up but only to the edge of the screen. So we've uh, conveniently trapped our player on the screen so he can't just jump off the screen and dodge bullets because we're going to be throwing some bullets at him at some point in time. The last thing we talked about doing in this video was adding a player laser to shoot a laser. So the first thing we have to do is we have to add another actor. We're going to add actor one. We're going to call it, let's call it player laser. So again, be descriptive for what you're doing. So calling it player laser, I'm going to go down to actor here. I'm going to again mess with size and color. The width is going to be pretty small. I'm just going to make it 5 by 15 for right now. And the color for right now, just so we can see it, maybe I'll choose an orange and say OK. I'm not going to pull this one on the screen because I'm going to spawn it. I better go back in. I was going to say that height said 120. So I'm not going to pull this on the screen. So all I did was change the player lasers color to orange, height, and width to 15. So I'm, I'm going to go back to my player. And then again, this is a key press conditional. So I'm going to go grab a rule, plus rule, and I'm going to type in the word key, K for key press conditional. And I'm going to punch the space bar here. When the space bar is down, do the following. I'm going to say spawn player. So again, I can go over here to this menu and I can go down to where I find spawn player. It's in the S's. Spawn actor. There it is. Grab it. Drag it down. I can also just type the word S and it should pop up. 
What actor we want to spawn? We want to spawn player laser. It's going to spawn him right in the middle for right now, and I'll show you how to do that later. But instead of rule up here, again, I'm going to say laser or spawn laser or something like this. So if you just did this um, and ran it, what you would see happen is the lasers would all show up and they would just stay in place because nothing told them to go to the top of the screen. So what we have to do is we have to go into player laser and basically what we have to say is as soon as you're spawn, start move. So if you type in a move without a conditional, any time that that thing spawns on the screen, it'll start moving. So I'm just going to spawn him in the direction of 90, which is up, or move him in the direction of 90, and he'll just move until he gets off of the screen. All right, I'll show you another trick a little bit later, but this is enough for this video. So if I play it here, we can move left, right, up, and down. And if we shoot, we have a laser that spawns from the center, which we'll fix at another time, and it goes off the screen. Thanks.